Naibuan. So this lesson is going to focus on animals. Listening lesson 7, api focus karanyan animals netang sattu gana. Right? Okay, so let's have a look at the first one. From eyes of an animal lover. Right? Sattu unta adhare karana kene geng api deyak. Ahala belu ham netang e kena hitana vidhita belu. Right? This is an extract from www.listenaminute.com. Right, okay. So, I'd like you to complete the answers, right? Ahagin in the la gaps multi no utrelian. I will play the audio twice. First time listen only. Second time mark the answers. Hema para vage mang audio ke de para play karanoa. Palavini para hagin in devani para answers mark karana. Listen a minute.com. Animals. I am a real animal lover. I'm fascinated by the whole animal kingdom. I loved animals when I was a kid. I used to read every book I could find on animals. I knew all the different animal species. The most exciting thing for me was going to the zoo. I would spend hours just watching the animals walk around, sit, or even sleep. When I was older, I went on a safari to Tanzania. I saw real wild animals in the wild. Everyone should do this once in their lives. Looking at animals in their natural habitat is a real honour. Now I'm worried about the future of many animals. Some of my favourite animals are in danger of dying out. We really need to change our lifestyle so our children can have the chance of seeing animals in the wild. Right, let's listen to it the second time. Please mark the answers. Listen a minute.com. Animals. I am a real animal lover. I'm fascinated by the whole animal kingdom. I loved animals when I was a kid. I used to read every book I could find on animals. I knew all the different animal species. The most exciting thing for me was going to the zoo. I would spend hours just watching the animals walk around, sit, or even sleep. When I was older, I went on a safari to Tanzania. I saw real wild animals in the wild. Everyone should do this once in their lives. Looking at animals in their natural habitat is a real honour. Now I'm worried about the future of many animals. Some of my favourite animals are in danger of dying out. We really need to change our lifestyle so our children can have the chance of seeing animals in the wild. Alright, so let's complete the gaps. Listen a minute.com. Animals. I am a real animal lover. I'm fascinated by the whole animal kingdom. I loved animals when I was a kid. I used to read every book I could find on animals. I knew all the different animal species. Right? So, I'm a real animal lover, right? And mama is a good kamati animal kingdom. Megata mam sattuna goda kadre is a podila make hatiata. And I used to read every book I could find on animals, right? Okay, so let's listen through. Species can be with the varge sattu. The most exciting thing for me was going to the zoo. I would spend hours just watching the animals walk around, sit, or even sleep. When I was older, I went on a safari to Tanzania. I saw real wild animals in the wild. Everyone should do this once in their lives. Looking at animals in their natural habitat is a real honour. Now I'm worried about the future of many animals. Some of my favourite animals are in danger of dying out. We really need to change our lifestyle so our children can have the chance of seeing animals in the wild. Right, okay. Mang ekka dige te complete karam o kade ke amaru achna nahe chera. Uh, you can obviously take a dictionary and refer to it. Right? Okay. 
So with that, we move on to practice question two. Asian or African? Right, African and then Asian. Listen and choose the suitable answer. Again, in the la galapeno terea, Thora none, right? The African elephant is bigger and heavier than the Asian elephant, right? Strong, the weak, the shorter, the longer, the smaller, the bigger, the longer, the shorter. Tusks can at the enema, um, size sick at the enema, right? Ears can at the enema, can can. Right, okay, so the first one is about the elephant, right? And there's another one about the lion. Okay, so I want you to listen carefully and mark the answers. Palavaniyaka elephant kana, devaniyaka sing here kana. As always, I will play the audio twice. First time listen, second time mark the answers. Hama parama vage audio kamande parak play karanama. Palavani para hagani in hundata devani para answers mark karan. Asian or African? The African elephant is bigger and heavier than the Asian elephant. Some people also say that it is stronger. The African elephant is taller than the Asian elephant and it's got longer legs. The Asian elephant has got smaller ears than the African elephant and its tusks are shorter. The Asian lion is smaller and lighter than the African lion. The male has got a shorter, darker mane. The African lion is stronger and heavier than the Asian lion. Some people also say that it is fiercer. The male has got a longer, thicker mane. Right, let's listen to it the second time. Asian or African? The African elephant is bigger and heavier than the Asian elephant. Some people also say that it is stronger. The African elephant is taller than the Asian elephant and it's got longer legs. The Asian elephant has got smaller ears than the African elephant and its tusks are shorter. The Asian lion is smaller and lighter than the African lion. The male has got a shorter, darker mane. The African lion is stronger and heavier than the Asian lion. Some people also say that it is fiercer. The male has got a longer, thicker mane. All right, so let us have a look at the answers. Right? Right? Asian or African? The African elephant is bigger and heavier than the Asian elephant. Some people also say that it is stronger. Right, stronger. So stronger. Right, okay. The African elephant is taller than the Asian elephant and it's got longer legs. Longer legs. Okay, there we are. The Asian elephant has got smaller ears than the African elephant. Right. And it's smaller ears. And then let's have a look at the tusks. Tusks are shorter. Right. Tusks are villa, dala avila itavadapoda kotai. Right? Okay, next one. The Asian lion is smaller and lighter than the African lion. Lighter. Bara adui. Podi sahabara adui. The male has got a shorter, darker mane. 
The African lion is stronger and heavier than the Asian lion. Right, so the African lion is stronger. Shakti mat bhaving utvedi barat vedi asyanu singhyat vada. Right? Some people also say that it is fiercer. Fiercer kyan is amharakkai kino ita vada godak napuru kira fierce, right? So they say Godakurate fears Vedi Kelat Kino, right? Okay. The male has got a longer, thicker mane. Right, so the male has got a longer and thicker mane. Right, okay. So next question about intelligent animals. Right? Hundata Praknya Vaktina Sattu. Listen to the radio program and number the animals in the order you hear them. Right. So, what do you have to do? Radio program make a number karan no ne pili vela ta sattu ahe na pili vela. Eke na pithamu dolphins a palaveni ta hene number one. Dogs a deveni ta number two. Right. So, you have to listen carefully and number them in the proper order. This is an extract from liveworksheets.com. Today we're talking about intelligent animals. Charlotte Golding is an animal expert and she studies animals, especially different kinds of extremely intelligent animals. Good morning, Charlotte. Good morning. So tell us about some of the animals you study. What kinds of things can they do? Well, most people know that whales and dolphins are very intelligent. They really can do some amazing things. They often work together in large groups to catch their food. They speak to each other by making noises. Yes, that shows great intelligence. And other animals that can speak are African grey parrots. They can learn to copy humans and to speak like them. Well, that's incredible. Yes, and some of them can answer questions about things. Wow! <laughs> Dogs, too, are very good at communicating generally. And some of them are very good at remembering things as well. One dog I studied can remember the names of thousands of things and he can go and get whichever thing his owner asks. It's really amazing. Thousands of them. Wow, I find it difficult to remember names. Yes, well, talking of remembering things, one animal, one of my personal favourites, is a chimpanzee. A chimpanzee? Yes, he can remember sequences of numbers. He looks at a computer screen showing a sequence of numbers from 1 to 10, for example, in different places on the screen. And when numbers disappear, he can remember exactly where each number was. That's amazing. Yes, and what's really amazing is that he only looks at the numbers for 60 milliseconds. When I tried it, I didn't have time to even see all the numbers. There was no chance to remember them at all. No, I'm sure I couldn't do that either. Anyway, come here. Right, now listen to it the second time. Devani Parahala, you can mark the answers. Unit 11, recording 1. Today we're talking about intelligent animals. Charlotte Golding is an animal expert and she studies animals, especially different kinds of extremely intelligent animals. Good morning, Charlotte. Good morning. So tell us about some of the animals you study. What kinds of things can they do? Well, most people know that whales and dolphins are very intelligent. They really can do some amazing things. They often work together in large groups to catch their food. They speak to each other by making noises. Yes, that shows great intelligence. And other animals that can speak are African grey parrots. They can learn to copy humans and to speak like them. Well, that's incredible. Yes, and some of them can answer questions about things. Wow! <laughs> Dogs, too, are very good at communicating generally. And some of them are very good at remembering things as well. One dog I studied can remember the names of thousands of things. 
and he can go and get whichever thing his owner asks. It's really amazing. Thousands of them. Wow, I find it difficult to remember names. Yes, well, talking of remembering things, one animal, one of my personal favourites, is a chimpanzee. A chimpanzee? Yes, he can remember sequences of numbers. He looks at a computer screen showing a sequence of numbers from 1 to 10, for example, in different places on the screen. And when numbers disappear, he can remember exactly where each number was. That's amazing. Yes, and what's really amazing is that he only looks at the numbers for 60 milliseconds. When I tried it, I didn't have time to even see all the numbers. There was no chance to remember them at all. No, I'm sure I couldn't do that either. Anyway, come have a look through. So, I hope you have finished it. Now, let's have a look at the answers. Unit 11, recording 1. program today we're talking about intelligent animals. Charlotte Golding is an animal expert and she studies animals, especially different kinds of extremely intelligent animals. Good morning Charlotte. Good morning. So tell us about some of the animals you study. What kinds of things can they do? Well most people know that whales and dolphins are very intelligent. They really can do some amazing things. They often work together in large groups to right. catch Right, okay. So whales and dolphins, okay, right. So she talks about what they do, right? Food, they speak to each other by making noises. Yes, that shows great intelligence. And other animals that can speak are African grey parrots. They can learn to copy humans and to right. speak like them. So the African grey parrots, Egolontat Kata Karana Pulong, humans have a copy karana pulong kilea kino, right? So she talks about the parrots. That's incredible. Yes. And some of them can answer questions about things. Wow. <laughs> Dogs too are very good at communicating generally. And some of them are very good at remembering things right. as well. Okay. With the Akino Ballo, dogs also are good at communicating, right? Ignore Samharakara Hundata Mataka the Aga and not Puluanki and Eka, Akino, right? Okay. One dog I studied can remember the names of thousands of things and he can go and get whichever thing his owner asks. It's really amazing. Right. Thousands of Deval Matakai. That's the Haskana Machana Matakai. Gain the Kena Badu Gila Tag Galeata. Gain the Pulua. Of them. Wow, I find it difficult to remember names. Yes, well, talking of remembering things, one animal, one of my personal favourites, is a chimpanzee. A chimpanzee? Yes, he can remember sequences of numbers. He looks at a computer screen showing a sequence of numbers from 1 to 10, for example, in different places on the screen. And when numbers disappear, he can remember exactly where each number was. That's right, amazing. okay. In chimpanzee na number sequences matakai, right? Eva diha bedha kimu ekina the high when a can number kila eka balala e sequences when as when eva balala balala e number api nikang eka eka number neti uno tema ten tang while a sequence ke missing numbers o koma hunta matakai kile akino, right? So first about the whales and the dolphins together, it passe a katakarani parrots lagana, dogs lagana, and then last with the chimpanzees, all right? Okay, so with that, we move on to the next question. Listen again, which things can each animal do? Right? Thing I again in no neapi, mona satata the speak to each other, speak like humans, paint pictures, use computers, remember names, remember numbers. Kata deva karana puluanki ene kapi nianone. Right? Okay, all right, so let's listen to it. Unit 11, recording 1. Hello, in our program today,
today we're talking about intelligent animals. Charlotte Golding is an animal expert and she studies animals, especially different kinds of extremely intelligent animals. Good morning, Charlotte. Good morning. So, tell us about some of the animals you study. What kinds of things can they do? Well, most people know that whales and dolphins are very intelligent. They really can do some amazing things. They often work together in large groups to catch their food. They speak to each other by making noises. Yes, that shows great intelligence. And other animals that can speak are African grey parrots. They can learn to copy humans and to speak like them. Well, that's incredible. Yes, and some of them can answer questions about things. Wow! <laughs> Dogs, too, are very good at communicating generally. And some of them are very good at remembering things as well. One dog I studied can remember the names of thousands of things and he can go and get whichever thing his owner asks. It's really amazing. Thousands of them. Wow, I find it difficult to remember names. Yes, well, unit of and dolphins are very intelligent. They really can do some amazing things. They often work together in large groups to catch their food. They speak to each other by making noises. Yes, that shows great intelligence. And other animals that can speak are African grey parrots. They can learn to copy humans and to speak like them. Well, that's incredible. Yes, and some of them can answer questions about things. Wow! <laughs> Dogs, too, are very good at communicating generally. And some of them are very good at remembering things as well. One dog I studied can remember the names of thousands of things and he can go and get whichever thing his owner asks. It's really amazing. Thousands of them. Wow, I find it difficult to remember names. Yes, well, talking of remembering things, one animal, one of my personal favourites, is a chimpanzee. A chimpanzee? Yes, he can remember sequences of numbers. He looks at a computer screen showing a sequence of numbers from 1 to 10, for example, in different places on the screen. And when numbers disappear, he can remember exactly where each number was. That's amazing. Yes, and what's really amazing is that he only looks at the numbers for 60 milliseconds. When I tried it, I didn't have time to even see all the numbers. There was no chance to remember them at all. No, I'm sure I couldn't do that either. Anyway, coming up with a break. Right, so you can listen to it the second time. This time, mark the answers. Me paro golonta answers mark karana pulua. Unit 11, recording 1. <laughs> program today we're talking about intelligent animals. Charlotte Golding is an animal expert and she studies animals, especially different kinds of extremely intelligent animals. Good morning Charlotte. Good morning. So tell us about some of the animals you study. What kinds of things can they do? Well most people know that whales and dolphins are very intelligent. They really can do some amazing things. They often work together in large groups to catch their food. They speak to each other by making noises. Yes, that shows great intelligence. And other animals that can speak are African grey parrots. They can learn to copy humans and to speak like them. Well, that's incredible. Yes, and some of them can answer questions about things. Wow! <laughs> Dogs, too, are very good at communicating generally. And some of them are very good at remembering things as well. One dog I studied can remember the names of thousands of things. And he can go and get whichever thing his owner asks. It's really amazing. Thousands of them. Wow, I find it difficult to remember names. Yes, well, talking of remembering things, one animal, one of my personal favourites, is a chimpanzee. A chimpanzee? Yes, he can remember sequences of numbers. He looks at a computer screen showing a sequence of numbers 
from 1 to 10, for example, in different places on the screen. And when numbers disappear, he can remember exactly where each number was. That's amazing. Yes. And what's really amazing is that he only looks at the numbers for 60 milliseconds. When I tried it, I didn't have time to even see all the numbers. There was no chance to remember them at all. No, I'm sure I couldn't do that either. Anyway, coming up on the program. All right. So... Let's mark the answers. Api balam uttara mono ana kiyala. Unit 11, recording 1. Hello. In our program today, we're talking about intelligent animals. Charlotte Golding is an animal expert and she studies animals especially different kinds of extremely intelligent animals. Good morning, Charlotte. Good morning. So, tell us about some of the animals you study. What kinds of things can they do? Well, most people know that whales and dolphins are very intelligent. They really can do some amazing things. They often work together in large groups to catch their food. They speak to each other by making noises. Yes, right, so. okay. So, whales and dolphins, they talk to each other. Whales and dolphins. Okay. So, they talk to each other. Right. Next one. Those great intelligence. And other animals that can speak are African grey parrots. They can learn to copy humans and to speak like them. That's right, incredible. okay. So the parrots can copy humans and talk like them. Parrots. Okay, let's listen. Yes, and some of them can answer questions about things. Wow. <laughs> Dogs too are very good at communicating generally. And some of them are very good at remembering things as well. One dog I studied can remember the names of thousands of things. Right, okay. Uh, remember the names? Dogs. Okay. And he can go and get whichever thing his owner asks. It's really amazing. Thousands of them. Wow, I find it difficult to remember names. Yes, well, talking of remembering things, one animal, one of my personal favourites, is a chimpanzee. A chimpanzee? Yes, he can remember sequences of numbers. He looks at a computer screen showing a sequence of numbers from 1 to 10, for example. Right, okay. In... So chimpanzees can use the computer. Chimpanzee. And then also the chimpanzee. can um, remember numbers, okay? So let's listen and see if anyone can paint pictures. Api balamu kaata hari pictures paint karana pulu anda kiela hagi nindala. In different places on the screen. And when numbers disappear, he can remember exactly where each number was. That's amazing. Yes. And what's really amazing is that he only looks at the numbers for 60 milliseconds. When I tried it, I didn't have time to even see all the numbers. There was no chance to remember them at all. No, I'm sure I couldn't do that either. Anyway, coming up on Right, so paint pictures now Kaurut Katawen Natihinda I would just say none there. Okay. Right, okay, so with that we move on to the next one. Lala Penguin goes shopping in Japan. Right, okay, so I would like you to listen. About Lala the penguin, honey. Uh, audio ek de parak play veno. Aha ge nee indala honda ta uttara maak karana. Meke actually video ek aak ogolon to onnang balana gaman karana pulwa link ek mamma daala tiyen. Right? Habe mamma karana audio ek play karana ek vitarai because I want to focus on your listening skills. Right? Um, so, please listen carefully and mark the answers. Lesi prashna hayak tiyen. It's happening in Japan. Meet Lala, a 10-year-old king penguin who used to call the Antarctic home. 
Kuala lives here with the Nishimoto family. And this king penguin is really living like a king. He's got his own room complete with a powerful air conditioner and free run of the property. But Lala isn't your average couch penguin. He likes to travel. That's when the Nishimotos help pack him up for a trip into town. When Lala hits the road, his favorite destination is no surprise. Where else? The fish store. <laughs> Sardines and mackerel are his favorite. He loves to eat them. He is adorable. Adorable, yes, and deserving of a doggy bag for the trip home. <laughs> Lala grew up in the cold Antarctic and now lives in a city known for its heat and humidity. As he heads home, he seems to pause at this soda machine, then moves on, possibly realizing he left his change in his other suit. No problem, just head into a neighbor's yard for a quick hose down. Ah, refreshing, then back on the road. Once home, Lala gets his knapsack unpacked, checks out his room, and at the end of a long day, spends a little quality time with the rest of the family. Right, let's listen to it the second time. It's happening in Japan. Meet Lala, a 10-year-old king penguin who used to call the Antarctic home. Lala lives here with the Nishimoto family. And this king penguin is really living like a king. He's got his own room complete with a powerful air conditioner and free run of the property. But Lala isn't your average couch penguin. He likes to travel. That's when the Nishimotos help pack him up for a trip into town. When Lala hits the road, his favorite destination is no surprise. Where else? The fish store. Sardines and mackerel are his favorite. He loves to eat them. He is adorable. Adorable, yes, and deserving of a doggy bag for the trip home. <laughs> Lala grew up in the cold Antarctic and now lives in a city known for its heat and humidity. As he heads home, he seems to pause at this soda machine. Then moves on, possibly realizing he left his change in his other suit. No problem, just head into a neighbor's yard for a quick hose down. Ah, refreshing, then back on the road. Once home, Lala gets his knapsack unpacked, checks out his room, and at the end of a long day, spends a little quality time with the rest of the family. All right, so let us mark the answers. Api balamu answers, mona mother. Kiela, right? Lala givaisa, Lala kohende enne, then Lala kohede jiva twinne. 
ලාලගේ රූම් එකේ මොනවද තියෙන්නේ එයා කන්ඩිෂන් එකක් තියෙනවද ෆිෂ් ටැංක් මාළු ටැංක් එකක් තියෙනවද ලාල කොහෙද යන්නේ ලාල මොනවද කන්න කැමති right so lala is a penguin right let's listen it's happening in japan meet lala a 10 year old king penguin who used to call the antarctic home right okay so ya ge vayas avurudu 10 ay 10 years old who used to call antarctica his home used to call can isra jeevat one antarctica ave ya henan ave antarctica ave indala right okay where does he live lala lives in japan patan ganna kotama kiyenawa japan kiyala right so he lives in japan right lala lives here with the mishimoto family and this king penguin is really living like a king He's got his own room complete with a powerful air conditioner. Right. Eage own room ekak thiyena powerful air conditioner ekak utekka. Let's listen. And free run of the property. But Lala isn't your average couch penguin. He likes to travel. That's when the Nishimoto's help pack him up for a trip into town. Right. Ethe Lala travel karanna kemathi etakota thamai egolo eyawa pack karala. නගරයට එවන්නේ රයිට් එයාට ඕන කරන බඩු දාලා යව නගරයට එවන්නේ රයිට් එහෙදී යා මොනවද කන්න කැමති කියන එක අපි අහන් ඉමු right okay sardine and mackerel are his favorite malu kanna thamaya paddi purama kamathi right okay so let's have a look at practice question 3 sadly endangered right now apita listen karana gama match karanna thiyenne this is an extract from www.liveworksheets.com right man hama thissama kiyenawa wage palaweni para balanna mokadda uttare right Devani para you can mark the answers. Mountain gorillas live in Africa. There are about 800 in the world today. Gorillas are endangered because of loss of habitat. Poaching and hunting baby gorillas to sell as exotic pets. Polar bears live in the Arctic. There are about 20,000 in the world today. Polar bears are endangered because of global warming and pollution. Tigers live in Asia. There are about 4000 in the world today. Tigers are endangered because of loss of habitat, global warming, poaching and hunting for their skins. Giant pandas live in China. There are about 2000 in the world today. Giant pandas are endangered because of loss of habitat and pollution. Right. Let's have a look at it the second time, right? Hagen inna gama makaran answers. Mountain gorillas live in Africa. There are about 800 in the world today. Gorillas are endangered because of loss of habitat poaching and hunting baby gorillas to sell as exotic pets polar bears live in the arctic there are about 20000 in the world today polar bears are endangered because of global warming and pollution tigers live in asia there are about 4000 in the world today Tigers are endangered because of loss of habitat, global warming, poaching and hunting for their skins. 
giant pandas live in China. There are about 2,000 in the world today. Giant pandas are endangered because of loss of habitat and pollution. All right, so let us have a look at the answers. Api palam ekata karan na. Make it sure amaru enne mukhe sentences ke match karan tiye ne sentence ke vidhya to me anava e adal ke match karan tiye, right? Mountain gorillas live in Africa. There are about eight hundred in the world today. Gorillas are endangered because of loss of habitat. Poaching and hunting baby gorillas to sell as exotic pets. Polar bears live in the Arctic. There are about 20,000 in the world today. Polar bears are endangered because of global warming and pollution. Tigers live in Asia. There are about 4,000 in the world today. Tigers are endangered because of loss of habitat, global warming, poaching and hunting for their skins. Giant pandas live in China. There are about 2,000 in the world today. Giant pandas are endangered because of loss of habitat and pollution. Right, it's Ramaru Neha, right? It seems a bit messy, right? Hamadan Mame lines, Kihila, and to Mame, I think, let us stick a dana gold balagan and a pull up. Mountain gorillas live in Africa. They are about 800 in the world today. It's a good attentive. If gorillas are endangered because of loss of habitat, poaching, and hunting, so that is going to be E. Polar bears live in the Arctic. A, they are about 20,000 in the world today. D, uh, polar bears are endangered because of global warming and pollution. B, right? E, Langaratini tigers, Lagana. Tigers live in Asia. I, they are about 4,000 in the world today. G, tigers are endangered because of global warming, poaching, and hunting. K, Giant pandas live in China, H. They are about 2,000 in the world today. L. Giant pandas are endangered because of loss of habitat and pollution, J. Alright, so with that, we move on to practice question 4, right? Abacus versus Limias. Watch the video and choose the correct answer. What is the man's name? Okay. How many alpacas does Jeff have? Right. Baby's name. And then lamb chop born. Old lamb chop. Abacus Kai. Okay. Right, so let's see, let's watch it once, okay, so that you know what is there. And then the second time, up your Hanagamang answers, Mark Karam. This is Jeff. These are his alpacas. Jeff has six alpacas. This is lamb chop. She was born on June 22nd. She is one week old. That's Kai. The alpacas like Kai. The alpacas like Jeff too. Right, let's listen to it the second time, Balanetua, and then mark the answers. 
This is Jeff. These are his alpacas. Jeff has six alpacas. This is lamb chop. She was born on June 22nd. She is one week old. That's Kai. The alpacas like Kai. The alpacas like Jeff too. Right, so we have to do this question. If you have any questions, you can ask me questions. Let's listen. This is Jeff. So, what is the man's name? Jeff. Means are his alpacas. Right, so you would have seen there were six of them. Jeff has six alpacas. This is lamb chop. Right. Lamb chop kiane patty atta. Right. And badamu lamb chop gyu pandine kawad the kiara. She was born on June 22nd. June 22nd. She is one week old. One week old. Sati Aivai sir. That's Kai. The alpacas like Kai. The alpacas like Kai. Think Kamati the Kai to? Definitely yes. Right? Okay. Um, link. For the next activity, and this is from learnenglishteens.britishcouncil.org, right? Exercise ka hena gamang api karan none, true the false ka hena ka tamay api mark karan none, right? So I want you to listen carefully and mark if they are true or false. First time, listen carefully. Second time, you can mark the answers. Okay, are we all together? Right. Next, we're going to look at the llamas. But actually, here we have four different animals which are all from South America and all related to camels. Llamas, which you have probably heard of over here, and over there, alpacas, vicunias, and guanacos. Llamas and alpacas are both domesticated animals, and vicunias and guanacos are wild. Llamas are the biggest animal. They can grow up to 1.8 meters tall. And in the past, they were used to carry things. Llamas are very sociable animals and live together in groups, in herds. Don't they spit at people though? Well, yes, they can. All members of the camel family sometimes spit. You don't want to mistreat a llama. It might even spit some of the contents of its stomach at you. <laughs> <laughs> but if you treat them properly, they're not likely to. They respond well to being trained and they are usually gentle and curious. Okay, over here we have the alpacas. As you can see, they are smaller than the llamas. They've got smaller faces and they always look as though they are smiling. <laughs> look at this one's face. Aww. The alpaca is famous for its wool, which is
is softer and warmer than sheep's wool. There's a big demand for alpaca wool from the fashion industry. Right, next to the alpacas, we have the vicuñas. As I said before, these animals are wild and they are thought to be the ancestors of the alpacas. Vicuñas are very elegant and graceful creatures. Look at this one, she's beautiful. She's Ooh, lovely. She's really. <laughs> have you heard of the Incas, the ancient rulers of Latin America who lived in the Andes? Mm. Oh, well, <laughs> they wore clothes made from vicuña wool. Only the royal family were allowed to wear the wool. It is even softer than alpaca wool, but the cunias can only be shorn of their wool every three years. For that reason, the wool's very expensive. Mm. And lastly, we have the guanacos. They are similar to the vicuñas, but larger and stronger. They are capable of surviving at over 4,000 meters in the Andes. When they are in the desert, they survive by licking the water off the cacti and other desert plants. Right, any questions? Um, I think I can hear this llama making a noise. <laughs> yes, that could be the llama humming. They don't open their mouths, they just make this strange noise. They hum when they're stressed, or the opposite, feeling relaxed. Can llamas live in the UK? Yes, there are quite a lot of llamas and alpaca in the UK. They adapt very well to our climate. They make good pets, and sometimes they're used for trekking. You go on a picnic, and use a llama to carry your food. Cool! I want to do that. And sometimes <laughs> farmers use them as guard dogs. I mean, guard llama. <laughs> <laughs> the adult males will protect sheep and hens from animals that might attack them, like dogs or foxes. They're really useful animals. Now, anyone else got any questions? Right, so let's listen to it again and mark the answers. Okay, are we all together? Right, next we're going to look at the llamas. But actually here we have four different animals which are all from South America and all related to camels. Llamas, which you have probably heard of over here, and over there alpacas, Vicunias and guanacos. Llamas and alpacas are both domesticated animals, and vicunias and guanacos are wild. Llamas are the biggest animal. They can grow up to 1.8 meters tall. And in the past, they were used to carry things. Llamas are very sociable animals and live together in groups in herds. Don't they spit at people though? Well, yes, they can. All members of the camel family sometimes spit. You don't want to mistreat a llama. It might even spit some of the contents of its stomach at you. <laughs> but if you treat them properly, they're not likely to. They respond well to being trained and they are usually gentle and curious. Okay, over here we have the alpacas. As you can see, they are smaller than the llamas. They've got smaller faces and they always look as though they are smiling. <laughs> look at this one's face. <laughs> the alpaca is famous for its wool, which is softer and warmer than sheep's wool. There's a big demand for alpaca wool from the fashion industry. Right, next to the alpacas, we have the vicuñas. As I said before, these animals are wild and they are thought to be the ancestors of the alpacas. Vicuñas are very elegant and graceful creatures. Look at this one, she's beautiful. She's Ooh, lovely. She's really. <laughs> have you heard of the Incas? the 
ancient rulers of Latin America who lived in the Andes. Oh well, they wore clothes made from vicunia wool. Only the royal family were allowed to wear the wool. It is even softer than alpaca wool. But the Cunias can only be shorn of their wool every three years. For that reason, the wool's very expensive. And lastly, we have the Guanacos. They are similar to the Vicunias, but larger and stronger. They are capable of surviving at over 4,000 meters in the Andes. When they are in the desert, they survive by licking the water off the cacti and other desert plants. Right, any questions? Um, uh, I think I can hear this llama making a noise. <laughs> yes, that could be the llama humming. They don't open their mouths, they just make this strange noise. They hum when they are stressed, or the opposite, feeling relaxed. Can llamas live in the UK? Yes, there are quite a lot of llamas and alpaca in the UK. They adapt very well to our climate. They make good pets and sometimes they're used for trekking. You go on a picnic and use a llama to carry your food. Cool, I want to do that. And sometimes <laughs> farmers use them as guard dogs. I mean, guard llama. <laughs> <laughs> The adult males will protect sheep and hens from animals that might attack them, like dogs or foxes. They're really useful animals. Now, anyone else got any questions? All right, so let's have a look at the answers. Okay, are we all together? Right, next we're going to look at the llamas. But actually here we have four different animals which are all from South America and all related to camels. Llamas, which you have probably heard of over here, and over there, alpacas, vicunias, and guanacos. Llamas and alpacas are both domesticated animals, and vicunias and guanacos are wild. Llamas are the biggest animal. They can grow up to 1.8 meters tall. And in the past, they were used to carry things. Llamas are very sociable animals and live together in groups, in herds. Don't they spit at people though? Well, yes, they can. All members of the camel family sometimes spit. You don't want to mistreat a llama. It might even spit some of the contents of its stomach at you. <laughs> But if you treat them properly, they're not likely to. They respond well to being trained and they are usually gentle and curious. Okay, over here we have the alpacas. As you can see, they are smaller than the llamas. They've got smaller faces and they always look as though they are smiling. <laughs> look at this one's face. <laughs> the alpaca is famous for its wool, which is softer and warmer than sheep's wool. There's a big demand for alpaca wool from the fashion industry. Right, next to the alpacas we have the vicunias. As I said before, these animals are wild and they are thought to be the ancestors of the alpacas. The Cunias are very elegant and graceful creatures. Look at this one. She's beautiful. She's Ooh, lovely. She Have you heard of the Incas, the ancient rulers of Latin America who lived in the Andes? Mm. Oh, well, they wore clothes made from Vicunia wool. Only the royal family were allowed to wear the wool. It is even softer than alpaca wool. But the Cunias can only be shorn of their wool every three years. For that reason, the wool's very expensive. And lastly, we have the Guanacos. They are similar to the Vicunias, but larger and stronger. They are capable of surviving at over 4,000 meters.
creatures in the Andes. When they are in the desert, they survive by licking the water off the cacti and other desert plants. Right, any questions? Um, I think I can hear this llama making a noise. <laughs> yes, that could be the llama humming. They don't open their mouths, they just make this strange noise. They hum when they are stressed, or the opposite, feeling relaxed. Can llamas live in the UK? Yes, there are quite a lot of llamas and alpaca in the UK. They adapt very well to our climate. Right, okay. They make good pets. And sometimes... Le sing a bit of tradigagan puluang, right? So, jati hatarak that is true, they are all related to camels. Llamas are the biggest, smallest neve hindaika falls. Llamas only... Uh, spit at humans if you mistreat them. Mistreat kyaane badly. Now, matakati agana listening wala mama kira tiyanawa. You have to be able to listen to synonyms or similar words. Right? Um, they look as if they are smiling. So, that is false. The wool is used for fashion. That is true. The wool is very expensive. Uh, that is also true. But uh, vikunas don't eat cacti, okay? Llamas and alpacas uh, can live in the UK, in the Ekat Bharati, right? Okay, so with that, we move on to practice question five, the deadliest animals, right? This is an extract from www.englishlistening.rocks, right? Listen and mark true or false, right? So first I would like you to listen. Second time, mark the answers if it is true or false. How did the varadi the kiya nega tamai api mark karan noni? Dangerous animals. What are the most dangerous animals? Here are the top four killers. Number one is the mosquito. It kills about 440,000 people a year. The dangerous mosquitoes live mostly in Africa. They have a bug that makes people sick. That bug causes a disease called malaria. The king cobra is number two. Each year, cobras kill between 20,000 and 125,000 people. Most of them are from India. Cobras have a poison that makes people sick. Most people die because they cannot go to a hospital. A hippo is number three. It looks cute, but it is dangerous. Each year, hippos kill about 3,000 people. That's more than the number of people killed by lions, elephants, and rhinos. Hippos will attack humans and other animals if their babies are in danger. Nile crocodiles are number four. These scary animals have sharp teeth, strange eyes, and can grow to five meters. They kill between 300 and several thousand people a year, mostly in Africa. Crocodiles will attack big animals like elephants and hippos. There are many dangerous animals in the world, but the most dangerous one of all is a human being. Right, let's listen to it the second time. Dangerous animals. What are the most dangerous animals? Here are the top four killers. Number one is the mosquito. It kills about 440,000 people a year. The dangerous mosquitoes live mostly in Africa. They have a bug that makes people sick. That bug causes a disease called malaria. The king cobra is number two. Each year, cobras kill between 20,000 and 125,000 people. Most of them are from India. Cobras have a poison that makes people sick. Most people die because they cannot go to a hospital. A hippo is number three. It looks cute, but it is dangerous. Each year, 
hippos kill about 3,000 people. That's more than the number of people killed by lions, elephants, and rhinos. Hippos will attack humans and other animals if their babies are in danger. Nile crocodiles are number four. These scary animals have sharp teeth, strange eyes, and can grow to five meters. They kill between 300 and several thousand people a year, mostly in Africa. Crocodiles will attack big animals like elephants and hippos. There are many dangerous animals in the world, but the most dangerous one of all is a human being. All right, so let's see. Mosquitoes kill lots of people each year. Kill people. Malaria comes from mosquitoes. The hippo kills about 100 people per week. Nile crocodiles aren't afraid of elephants or people. King cobras have poison. Okay, so let's listen carefully and mark the answers. Dangerous animals. What are the most dangerous animals? Here are the top four killers. Number one is the mosquito. It kills about 440,000 people a year. The dangerous mosquitoes live mostly in Africa. Right, they so it kills a about 440,000 people a year. I think that's true. That's quite a lot of people for a year. Right? Okay. Right, okay, so malaria comes from mosquitoes, that is also true, right. Number two, each year, cobras kill between 20,000 and 125,000 people. Most of them are from India. Cobras have a poison that makes people sick. Most right. people die. So there is a poison. Cobras do have a poison and that is true. Okay. And they cannot go to a hospital. A hippo is number three. It looks cute, but it is dangerous. Each year, hippos kill about 3,000 people. That's more than the number of people killed by lions, elephants, and rhinos. Right, okay, so 3,000 per year. Okay, so this is 100 people per week. So you'd have to probably make the calculation, right? Uh, we have roughly four weeks, 48. So 48 divided by this, I don't think it comes to about 100. Okay, so maybe not the right answer. Right, so um, seems like it's not going to be 100, it's less than that, so I would definitely take this as false. Okay, let's listen. Hippos will attack humans and other animals if their babies are in danger. Nile crocodiles are number four. These scary animals have sharp teeth, strange eyes, and can grow to five meters. They kill between 300 and several thousand people a year, mostly in Africa. Crocodiles will attack big animals like elephants and hippos. There are many dangerous animals in the world, but the right. most so, anivare me ego la tekkarna lukua, elephants la, hippos la, minisud maranoa. So, are they afraid of them? Um, no, they aren't, right? So, Nile crocodiles aren't afraid of elephants and people. That is also true. Okay. Right. So, with that, we move on to the next question. Listen again and complete the gaps, okay? So, make it a bigger to yanava. Make it koma pi complete karana one. So, slowly you will have to do it, okay? So, first time listen 
ඕගලන්ට ඕනේ නම් ෆස්ට් ටයිම් උත් ආන්සර්ස් මාක් කරන්න මේක ටිකක් ගොඩක් තියෙන හින්දා සෙකන්ඩ් ටයිම් උත් මම ඔඩියෝ එක ප්ලේ කරන්නම් සෝ ඉෆ් යු ෆීල් ඉට්ස් ඩිෆිකල්ට් ෆස්ට් ඇන්ඩ් සෙකන්ඩ් ටයිම් දෙකම ආන්සර්ස් ලියන්න එතකොට තර්ඩ් ටයිම් මම ප්ලේ කරනකොට අපි ආන්සර්ස් චෙක් කරමු ඔෆ් යු ගෝ ඩු ඉට් ඔන් යුර් ඕන් ඩේන්ජරස් ඇනිමල්ස් වොට් ආර් ද මෝස්ට් ඩේන්ජරස් ඇනිමල්ස් හියර් ආර් ද ටොප් 4 කිලර්ස් නම්බර 1 is the mosquito. It kills about 440,000 people a year. The dangerous mosquitoes live mostly in Africa. They have a bug that makes people sick. That bug causes a disease called malaria. The king cobra is number 2. Each year, cobras kill between 20,000 and 125,000 people. Most of them are from India. Cobras have a poison that makes people sick. Most people die because they cannot go to a hospital. The hippo is number 3. It looks cute, but it is dangerous. Each year, hippos kill about 3,000 people. That's more than the number of people killed by lions, elephants, and rhinos. Hippos will attack humans and other animals if their babies are in danger. Nile crocodiles are number 4. These scary animals have sharp teeth, strange eyes, and can grow to 5 meters. They kill between 300 and several thousand people a year, mostly in Africa. Crocodiles will attack big animals like elephants and hippos. There are many dangerous animals in the world, but the most dangerous one of all is a human being. Let's listen to it the second time. Now we're going to answer this more like a new one. Make a complete kind of battery with Shiva. May para hanagaman complete karan. Dangerous animals. What are the most dangerous animals? Here are the top four killers. Number one. is the mosquito. It kills about 440,000 people a year. The dangerous mosquitoes live mostly in Africa. They have a bug that makes people sick. That bug causes a disease called malaria. The king cobra is number 2. Each year, cobras kill between 20,000 and 125,000 people. Most of them are from India. Cobras have a poison that makes people sick. Most people die because they cannot go to a hospital. The hippo is number 3. It looks cute, but it is dangerous. Each year, hippos kill about 3,000 people. That's more than the number of people killed by lions, elephants, and rhinos. Hippos will attack humans and other animals if their babies are in danger. Nile crocodiles are number 4. These scary animals have sharp teeth, strange eyes, and can grow to 5 meters. They kill between 300 and several thousand people a year, mostly in Africa. Crocodiles will attack big animals like elephants and hippos. There are many dangerous animals in the world, but the most dangerous one of all is a human being. Right. Let's have a look at the answers. Antima activity eka answers tik api balan, right? E kene me yana piriwelata ma audio eka yana piriwelata ma thamai daala tiyenne hagen indala you should write the appropriate answer. Dangerous animals What are the most dangerous animals? Here are the top four killers. Number one is the mosquito. It kills about 440,000 people a year. The dangerous mosquitoes live mostly in Africa. They have a bug that makes people sick. That bug causes a disease called malaria. Live mostly in Africa. They have a bug. that makes people sick that bug causes a disease called malaria the king cobra is number 
each year. Cobras kill between 20,000 and 125,000 people. Most of them are from India. Cobras have a poison that makes people sick. Most people die because they cannot go to a hospital. A hippo is number three. It looks cute, but it is dangerous. Each year, hippos kill about 3,000 people. That's more than the number of people killed by lions, elephants, and rhinos. Hippos will attack humans and other animals if their babies are in danger. Nile crocodiles are number four. These scary animals have sharp teeth, strange eyes, and can grow to five meters. They kill between 300 and several thousand people a year, mostly in Africa. Crocodiles will attack big animals like elephants and hippos. There are many dangerous animals in the world, but the most dangerous one of all is the human being. Tiga kikmen tu gya, right? Tiga paring ni an no ne hindu man tatak galadiwa. Hei meka kiri uhama, mang hei mati semua kira ay check kalla balan, right? What are the most dangerous animals? Here are the top four killers. Number one is the mosquito. It kills about 440,000 people a year. The dangerous mosquitoes live mostly in Africa. They have a bug that makes people sick. That bug causes a disease called malaria. The king cobra is number two. Each year, cobras kill between 20,000 to 125,000 people. Most of them are from India. Cobras have a poison that makes people sick. Most people die because they cannot go to a hospital. The hippo is number three. It looks cute, but it's dangerous. Each year, hippos kill about 3,000 people. That's more than the number of people killed by lions, elephants, and rhinos. Hippos will attack humans and other animals if their babies are in danger. Nile crocodiles are number four. They are scary animals. Uh, sorry, these scary animals have sharp teeth, strange eyes, and can grow up to five meters. They kill between 300 and several thousand people a year, mostly in Africa. Crocodiles will attack big animals like elephants and hippos. There are many dangerous animals in the world, but the most dangerous one of all is the human being. Honey, name. Okkuma spellings of Thari, Gaffil seems okay. And with that, right, we've come to the last activity. Think up a Gaffil kara, true false kara, multiple choice kara, matching activities kara. Short answered questions, listening for specific information. And with that, we've come to the end of our seventh listening lesson, Animals.